Welcome to Season 4 of The Good Pod. Today's podcast is presented by Dr. Barry Napier. How do you know that your religion is right? It is a matter of some concern to me that many Christians, including pastors, seem unable or unwilling to assert God's truth when it comes to the authenticity of their salvation and faith. When asked a direct question or when faced with doubters or scoffers, they appear to back down and waffle, or worse, joke about it. Someone comes to you and throws out a challenge. They demand, how do you know that your religion is right and all the others are wrong? I often get this question. The questioner dares you to respond, because to him, any kind of definite firm answer will prove you are an arrogant bigot. The answer must be vague and ecumenical to be satisfactory. How many times have you backed down in the face of this kind of opposition? Did you feel terrible afterwards because it was cowardly? Were you angry because you did not have an answer? Shamefully it has happened to me, so I know what you feel like. Is there an answer that will satisfy doubters and scoffers? The simple reply is no. Indeed, we should not be worried about answering the endless, mindless queries and derisive comments of these folk. If they do not like our answer, if it is biblical, well, tough. By all means, give them answers supported by Scripture. But don't feel bad if you cannot satisfy all the opposing queries and comments. You will never in your lifetime ever answer this kind of unbelief to the satisfaction of scoffers. This is because they do not really want answers. They merely wish to see you uncomfortable and squirming in your seat. So what can you do about it? You must answer them in a biblical way. The first thing to realize is that you are not a slave to any man because God is not a debtor. You are a son or daughter of Almighty God that gives you a status that your opposer has not got and never will have unless God saves him. This places you in a position of supreme authority. Thus, if you witness according to Scripture, you have nothing to worry about. That your answers will not satisfy your hearer, who is probably not listening anyway, is beside the point. The second thing to remember is that all people, saved or unsaved, are commanded to obey God. Obviously, most people in this world are unsaved and cannot respond spiritually, but they can at least follow the general laws set by God, including morality. If they do not, that is their problem, not yours. Salvation is a spiritual act. God is spirit. His word is founded on his spiritual will and commands. Therefore, no matter what you say to an unsaved person, he will be totally unable to comprehend what you say, unless, of course, the Lord wills it. Yes, the words themselves may have an human meaning, but because the person is spiritually dead, he will not be able to understand what those words really mean. A dead man cannot possibly understand or respond to life. In my own early days as a Christian, I thought that I had to have all the answers ready for unbelievers who taunted or queried me about my faith. This led me to develop all kinds of clever answers and arguments. But it slowly dawned on me, over about eight years, that I was being foolish and wasting valuable time. I did not need to learn clever arguments and have all the answers, nor did I need to be humanly logical. Please note that spiritual logic is very different. All I needed to do was to be faithful to my Lord and to repeat what he had said. Simple, but so hard to put into operation by stiff-necked people like me. God says those who are dead in their sins are unable to comprehend spiritual things, so do not expect even the most intellectual of unbelievers to understand what you say to them. They cannot understand because they are blinded to the truth and cannot see it. Be frank about it. What is humanly logic about salvation? 
about God becoming human and sacrificing himself uh, for the sins of his creatures, about the spiritual world itself. The real crux of the matter is found in texts such as Romans, Romans 1, verses 18 to 20. It says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Bluntly, those who say there is no God are fools. God says so in the Old Testament. And they have no excuse whatever. They know inwardly that God exists and that they are subject to him. And this is why they are so vocal and angry about him. The louder they shout, in fact, the more it shows it. The things of creation clearly prove the existence of God and who he really is. Thus, when men and women challenge you to prove God, point them to this text, it tells them they know fully who God is. What about those who retort, OK, how do you know that what you say is actually true? Prove what you say is correct and that your religion is the only one. Once again, the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 16, supplies the unique and godly answer. One that your inquisitors will not like or accept. It is very simple. And it says this, The Spirit itself bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If you don't have that witness, you are not a child of God. This remarkable text tells us a great truth. It says that every Christian knows within his spirit that he is saved and that his religion or belief is true and unique. This is because the Holy Spirit himself gives us that assurance. Do not pass it off as being just imagination and don't let sneering unbelievers make you think that you, what you say is nonsense. They are incapable of understanding. To them we are speaking a totally foreign language. You see, a Christian has nothing at all to prove to unbelievers. The believer is 100% saved and knows God. He has the Holy Spirit in him. It is he who is destined for heaven, not the scoffer. When I stumbled on this magnificent truth many years ago, my personal faith leapt forward and my preaching became real. I was no longer dancing to the world, or the organised churches for that matter, uh, but was speaking with the authority of God. But it took me about 20 years to discover that fact. Just tell those who sneer that they are going to hell unless they repent and are saved. Leave the rest to the Holy Spirit. Regenerating or condemning men is his job, not ours. You have a faith that is real, no matter how faltering or small it might be. Even the most timid expression of faith is of God and is enough to show that you are on the Lord's side. The people who need to worry are those with no faith at all, for they are going to hell. Their prattling and sneering will do them no good in this world or the next, if they have no peace with God. Next time they try to make you look stupid, just quote the texts above. Some will be infuriated by your supposed arrogance and your refusal to be drawn along their well-worn, worldly path of argument and counter-argument. But that is up to them. Just tell them what God says. You can do no more. Then walk away. Why? Because we are not here to argue our case. Our sole task is to declare God's truth. No argument, no debate, just state God's word and truth. Lastly, should we show respect for other religions? Whether we're talking about Islam, Hinduism or any other religion, including the well-established Roman Catholicism, the answer is always the same. We must respect people as people and show them courtesy as far as we are able. But we can have no respect at all for their beliefs and false religion. Really, the answer is very simple and scriptural. <laughs>